Good. Yeah, did a great job. We need to uh, bring her over to Cameron Indoor Stadium. I don't know. We have we have we have some pretty good anthems in there. We do. The but she was, confines. She, she was, was fantastic. That that was really good. Starting lineups now. Central Michigan comes in one and three. They won their opener over UMass, and they have fallen to Kentucky, Marquette, and Kansas. All two future opponents and one past opponent of the Blue Devils. Sue Guevara is in her twenty or in her seventh year in Mount Pleasant. She is 98 and 96, 13 years as a head coach, many, many more than that as an assistant, 221 and 178 overall. Kirby Tam is the point guard, 5'10 junior from Petoskey, Michigan. She averages three and a half per game. Also in the backcourt, 5'8 senior from Mount Vernon, Ohio, Nikki DeGiulo. She averages 13.3. In the middle is a 6'2 junior from Saginaw, Michigan, Jasmine Bracey. She averages 10 points and 11 rebounds per contest. Crystal Bradford is one of the forwards, a 6'0 junior from Detroit, all preseason, all conference. In the MAC, 21.3 points a game. And the final starter is a 5'6 sophomore from Warren, Michigan's the jury T Turner. She averages 8.5 per game. Tam, DeJulo, Bracey, Bradford, and Turner, the five for Central Michigan. For your Blue Devils, 6 0 overall, ranked second in both polls. Coach Pease in her seventh year in Durham, 180 and 35, 22 years overall, 496 and 183. Chelsea Gray will get to start at the point. The 5'11 senior from Manteca, California, averages 12 and a half points a game. Alexis Jones is in the backcourt as well. 5'8 sophomore from Irving, Texas. She averages 13 and a half per contest. Elizabeth Williams is in the middle. 6'3 junior from Virginia Beach, averaging 15 points and six rebounds per contest. She had 18 and eight yesterday against Xavier, along with four block shots. Amber Henson in the starting lineup for the third straight game. Replacing the injured Haley Peters. Amber is a 6'4 redshirt freshman from Tampa, Florida. And the final starter is the 6'1 senior from River Forest, Illinois, just north of Chicago, the team's leading scorer. That would be Trisha Liston with 18 points a game. Gray, Jones, Williams, Henson, and Liston, the 5 for Duke. Three-person officiating crew today, Ed Selaski and Dee Kantner, veterans of plenty of Duke women's games, and Maggie Tyman who, to my knowledge, has never officiated one of the Duke women's games. Well, it's nice to know that you've got two veteran officials on, on the ball game and, again, very familiar with two of the three. And, and uh, again, we'll have to wait and see, but I would imagine that uh, the two vets will lead the way. They know Duke very, very well. It seems like they're breaking in a new crew of officials this year. It seems like every game we've had two veterans and one younger one. Well, and, uh, you know, attrition in every field, and right. you have to keep the new ones coming along. And just for our listeners' sake, and also just to understand the numbers of games these officials do. I mean, they're traveling. They're, they sometimes they've got five games a week, maybe more. Oh, it's a it's a full time job this time of year, uh, no question. We are underway. Elizabeth Williams wins the tip. Trisha Liston will grab it and throw it down low to Elizabeth. Left block. Now she passes out. Jones goes to Gray. Right wing three. Rainbow. Good. All right, great ball movement inside out. Double team came over on Williams, able to find her teammates outside. Three nothing Blue Devils. The Chippewas of Central Michigan bring it left to right. There's a three ball for Bradford. It is no good. Alexis Jones is right there to claim the rebound. Blue Devils in their road black uniforms, trimmed in white with the name and number in blue on the back. Central Michigan in the home white. Trim in maroon and gold. Yeah, Bradford wears 23. We'll call the number a lot. The jumper from Gray is no good. Offensive rebound for Amber Henson. Out to Gray, over to Jones. Shovel pass, corner three, swish for Trisha Liston. Wow, not a, Blue not, not a lot of room there. Bradford right in her face. She drained it. Jones almost forced a steal in the backcourt, applying one-person pressure. Now Jessica Green gets it over to the right side for Tam. Gray, Green, a late addition to the starting lineup. Tam dishes to the left side. The three ball is short. Nice box out from Duke. Liston will pick it up off the deck. She hands to Gray. 
Blue Devils working right to left. Gray finds a lane to the basket. High off the glass, no good. Williams there for the offensive rebound. Power move up and in. Well, one of the things they wanted to work on, obviously, they want to get O boards up to 25. They don't want to give second opportunities uh, on the defensive end as well. Timeout. Central Michigan, the Blue Devils have come out on fire. And the veteran head coach, Sue Guevara, doesn't want it to continue if she can help it. And well, I'm not sure that she can. Yeah, Bradford and Green, they combined uh, 19 for Bradford, 15 for Green. That's probably the reason Green's in the starting lineup uh, in that losing effort yesterday uh, to Kansas. But again, 32-32 at half. Uh, they played well together, so they're out there together. But Bradford, as we mentioned, she's a volume shooter. She will put it up. Uh, it looks like they're going to put Bradford on Trish which I think uh, could be very interesting. Trish already popping a three right in her face. Jessica Green, preseason All-Mac, along with Bradford, 5'10", junior from Belleville, Michigan. Chippewas get it into the front court. Blue Devils already on top, 8 nothing, And they throw the pass away. Amber Henson tipped it out of bounds. Nice corner defense there by Jones and Gray. Yeah, nice little trap, and it looked like it was going to be a turnover. Glanced off of Henson. The Blue Devils have come out with a little extra jump in their step to begin this one. Noticeable. Green on the left wing, fires cross court right. DeJulo loads up the three baseline and it's good. Nikki DeJulo gets her team on the board. It is 8-3, we've played just about two minutes. Gray to Liston on the right wing. She throws it inside, that'll be Williams. Double teamed, gets it to Jones, back to Williams, out to Henson. And she throws it to the corner left for Gray. Power move on the dribble across the lane. Out to Jones. Wing three left in and out. A little bit too hard. Over the back it goes. And Henson reached over and tapped it out of bounds on the rebound. So yeah. it'll be Central Michigan's ball. Yeah, D. Kantner on the baseline. Big smile on her face. Easy call to make there. Henson knew it too. No argument from her. Bradford will bring it up. One on one with Gray. She drives right. Crashes into wow. Chelsea. And there's another charge taken. Well, I mean, Gray is, I mean, she is the leader on this team. Uh, she knows Bradford is her opposite on Central Michigan and absolutely took her one-on-one. -on -one. I believe that will be her 45th career charge taken. She hooks the pass to Williams, who gets called for traveling. That was nice interior defense by Bradford to reach a hand in there to tie Elizabeth up. Yeah, normally you'd expect some kind of whistle as far as a foul call, but it uh, looked pretty clean. Central Michigan into the front court. Bradford streaks to the basket, hooks the pass out as she was cut off. Another three for DeJulo is no good, but Henson got there too late and fouled her. Yeah, if there is a cardinal sin, it is, it's fouling a, a three-point shooter, and Amber just could not stop her momentum. So three free throws coming for the senior, Nikki DeJulo. The first one is good. She has all four of Central's points. She is a 5'8 senior from Mount Vernon, Ohio. That one is good, so she is two for two. As we look down the Central Michigan roster, all but two players hail from the state. And uh, DeJulo is one of them from Ohio. And then one of their freshmen who is not playing this year is from Denmark. The third free throw is no good. Blue Devils claim the rebound. It is 8-5 Duke in the early going. They jumped out 8-0. Liston from three, right side, too hard off the back of the rim. And Central will grab the rebound, push it quickly ahead to Jessica Green, to Jujulo on the run, and she drained another three from the left wing. She barely set her feet. And just like that, it's eight apiece. Yeah, I watched her in warm-up yesterday before the Kansas game. She's got a nice stroke. Gray throws it inside to Williams, immediately double-teamed. And let's see, somebody kicked it or there's a foul? Yeah. And there is a foul. Yeah, it just kind of gave her some leg action as she tried to go baseline. It'll be on Kirby Tam, her first, and the team's second. Henson will go out, Odera Cheatham will come in. Freshman from Oakland, California, Gray passes in to Liston. She'll reset the offense from the top of the circle. Liston dribbles right, gives it to Gray, middle of the floor, fakes the three, drives past the defender, dishes out to Liston. She slashes to the basket, gives it down low Williams. The shot is short, might have been partially blocked. Central will take the rebound the other way with a chance to go ahead. 
DeJulo throws it inside. The layup attempt is no good, but there's a foul. Uh, it's good ball movement, uh, able to beat Duke down the floor, had good numbers, and got it in on the low post. And Elizabeth got her with the body. That'll be her first and the team second. And you have to credit Central Michigan. They survived the initial surge. It was 8-0 Duke. Now it's 8-8 with a chance to go ahead. No, absolutely. The, the energy coming out of the locker room for Duke was at, at a peak. And now it's a little bit of a lull in Michigan. Central Michigan's right back in it. Jasmine Bracey is at the free throw line. And she made her first one. Bracey is a 6'2 junior from Saginaw, Michigan. Averaging a double-double. 10 points and 11 and a half rebounds in the Chippewas' first four games. Second free throw is no good. Cheatham will get the rebound. And the Blue Devils find themselves trailing by a point after starting the game 8-0. Williams, high post, lobs down low. Gray catches and misses the no-footer from the left side. Rebound is loose. Williams grabs it, gives it back to Gray, who shovels it to Cheatham. Power move in the lane, and it's good. Well, just a nice presence around the low post and very active. You're going to boost your O boards in that situation, but the bucket at the end, nice. 10-9, Blue Devils. Bradford crashes into Gray again. She pushed off and got away with it. They give it to Bracey off the glass. It's no good. Cheatham grabs the rebound, outlets it quickly to Alexis Jones, who drives past one defender, takes it up in traffic, off the glass and in. Yeah, too much speed, great ball movement. I think they thought she was going to pull it back out. First bucket for the sophomore from Irving, Texas, and here come the Chippewas. They dish to the corner. Bradford wide open. Baseline three, good from the left side. Wow. 12-12. I think we're going to have an up and down afternoon here. <laughs> Till somebody runs out of gas. Gray drives middle, dishes to the corner. Liston fakes the three. Pull up jumper inside the arc, in and out. Huge battle for the rebound, and the Chippewas win it. They fire out quickly. Bradford on the run, two on two. They dish to the corner. DeJulo, right wing three. Good. Nikki DeJulo with 11 of her team's 15 points, and the Chippewas lead by three five minutes into this one. Yeah, too much time, too much space, and she could set her feet. Very comfortable out there. Gray lobs it down low. Williams catches under the basket and finishes off the glass. Well, I don't know many posts that could catch that pass. That was beautiful. 15-14, Duke trails by a point, and Green shuffled her feet. And that will bring us to our first media timeout. We'll take a break from St. Thomas. 14.41 to play. giant TV production truck in a compact, portable video production system. New Tech TriCaster has everything you need for a network-style video production. Camera switching, graphics, special effects, virtual sets, and more. You can stream your production live to the internet and record up to eight separate channels of HD video all in one system. New Tech TriCaster. It's a television studio in a box. Find out more at newtech.com. visit my island, the United States Virgin Islands. Discover how life is meant to be. Call your travel agent today. We might need an extra caffeinated beverage to get through <laughs> this one. Blue Devils and Central Michigan up and down, back and forth, 15 to 14 Central after the first media timeout. 
Yeah, all, all four made buckets by Central Michigan, three-pointers, so guarding the perimeter going to be key. Chloe Wells in for Duke. She finds Gray on the left wing, who throws it back to Wells on the right side. Inside pass tipped away by Williams, out of bounds, or intended for Williams, and Elizabeth knocked it out with her foot. Yeah, ambitious trying to feed that into a double team on Elizabeth Williams. Got to pass that back out and around. Chloe Wells is in for Liston. The other four are the same. Chippewas with the ball and a one-point lead. They're shooting left to right. Bradford at the high post. She is their best player. Wells almost picked her pocket, but Bradford will come away with it. Down low, Mincy crashes into Williams, and Elizabeth blocked the shot. There you go. All 76 games as a Blue Devil now. The streak is intact, and Duke throws a bad pass that the Chippewas intercept. They'll take it quickly the other way. Stop and pop on the jumper is short. Rebound is tipped out. Bradford controls, cast the three immediately, and drains it. Yeah, busted play. Looked like Duke was in good position for the rebound, and it caromed over to Bradford. Central on fire from beyond the arc in the early going. Cheatham high post. Williams low post. Bank shot. No good. Rebound comes down to Central Michigan. Bracy will snatch it away and give it to Turner. Now to the corner left for Jordan LaDuke, who is in for the first time. I like the last name. Yeah, she should have a big day today. We hope not, actually. <laughs> DeJulo and LaDuke playing catch. And Gray. Uh, it just looked like she uh, Let's see. She lost slipped out of her right hands, now. yeah. So Duke basketball. 13-14 to go. Blue Devils with the ball, down by four. Gray on the slow dribble. Into the front court, signals the play as she dribbles with her left hand. Moving left side, DeGilo picks her up. They throw it inside Williams, immediately double team. Back out it goes to Wells, back into Williams, again with a double team. She finds Jones, who lays it up off the glass, no good from right in front of the basket. Jones involved in a scrum, and finally the whistle blows. And is it going to be on Lex? Right. Probably, yeah. That was uh, a bit of a, a bit aggressive on the sophomore's part there. And that'll be her first foul, team's third. Well, a miss from point blank. Looked like she tried to put it over the top of the rim. Use the glass. Turner into the front court for Central. Wells right in her, her grill makes her stop the dribble. Over to LaDuke. Now to Julo pops the three deep right baseline. It's no good. Long rebound. Karam's out. And Jones slammed it off Bradsford's leg. Oh, they say she didn't. No, no, no. She, she did slam it, but it hit her out of bounds. So out on, oh. on Lex Jones. That was on the far side of the court at the very end of the Duke bench where very, that action happened. Yeah, very athletic play by Jones. Just unlucky it came back and hit her. LaDuke throws it into Bradford at the head of the key, guarded by Wells. Back to the other side to DeGiulo, runs baseline, and she gets a draws a blocking foul on Elizabeth Williams. No? Yeah. No, the official held up two hands. That was on Cheatham. Huh. Okay. Didn't see that. Uh-uh. Well, that's better, though, because yeah. that would have been Elizabeth's second. Bradford off the inbound for three. No good off the glass. LaDuke had the rebound and lost it and can't save it. Wells will pick it up and head the other way. Jones is ahead of the pack. Wells will bounce it to her in the corner right. They want to go Henson on the lob, but they can't get it to her. Now to Gray inside. Cheatham wow. layup is good. Uh, what a nice fake by Gray at the top of the key because both players were open. Head fake, ball fake to Henson, and then over to Cheatham. Easy layup. Odera has four. It's 18 to 16 Central. Just inside 12 minutes. Bad pass inside. Henson on the floor with it. And she is going to have possession and get fouled. Nice. Jasmine Bracey will pick up the foul. That is her first. And it will bring us to our second media timeout. 11.50 to play. Half number one from St. Thomas. It's Spectacular views of the Caribbean are just the beginning at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. Discover a place where turquoise waters meet clear blue skies, where fine dining and poolside bars delightfully coexist, where fun and relaxation are an art form. A Marriott dream vacation awaits you here on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's all here at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. UVI is closer than you think.
at UVI, the beach is closer than you think. At UVI, the professors are closer than you think. At UVI, your success is closer than you think. The University of the Virgin Islands is closer than you think. Call us today or visit our website. Welcome to Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas, the Caribbean's most entertaining beach resort. Experience the Caribbean's most entertaining beach resort, Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. No passport required. Eighteen sixteen, Blue Devils trail by two as they have the ball. Shooting right to left, Cheatham inside, power move off the glass, shot is no good. Rebound tipped around, Liston comes away with it, so Duke will have another possession. Jones, middle of the floor, over to Liston on the right wing, immediately double teamed. Now to Jones, she throws it down low, but it is tipped away, and Central will come away with it. Another new player in for them, Taylor Johnson, a 5'11 senior from Belding, Michigan. They have veterans on this ball club, primarily juniors and seniors. DeJulo drives left, gives it to the corner for Green. She throws it length of the floor for Johnson, who just aired a three. Liston will grab the rebound, fires ahead to Wells, one on three, Chloe to the basket anyway, and she draws the foul. Wow, a little ball fake. Jones uh, waiting on the wing opposite side and went with the pass fake, went around. Ambitious going into a double team, but got the call. Jewel Cotton will get the foul. She just checked in. Wells free throw is good. Yeah, one of the keys uh, for Coach P, getting to the foul line more. Only 10 shots from the free throw line in the win over Xavier yesterday. Chelsea Gray is back in. Alexis Jones will sit down. So it's Liston, Gray, Henson, Wells, and Cheatham. And the second free throw is no good. Liston back tips the rebound right to Chelsea Gray. Heads they up. throw it down low, left block, Cheatham, power move with the spin, and it's good. Now she had that yesterday and it got a whistle. That was a great play. 19-18, Blue Devils back on top. So down low it goes, and the layup is good for Jewel Cotton. Blue Devils got caught ball watching down there on the post. Yeah, on the right side, and easy path to the basket. Inside it goes, Cheatham again over the double team. Her shot is no good this time from the right of the lane. Johnson will get it for Central. She has it. Throws it to Cotton. The runner inside is no good. Cheatham is there for the rebound. Yeah, it looked like maybe a block. Henson might have gotten a hand on it. She outlets it to Gray. Ten minutes to go. Gray's cut off on the drive. Blue Devils down by one. Gray still dribbling on the left wing. LaDuke jumps out on her. Down low it goes to Liston. Through the double team off the glass. Good from the left block. Uh, just too strong. I mean, just a great play. And they really started to emphasize that with, with Trisha. 21 to 20, Duke by a point, 9.45 to go. Johnson passes cross court left to DeJulo, pull up jumper inside the arc is good from the left baseline. A nice shot. I mean, she is filling it up first half. Nikki DeJulo already has her average at 13. Wells double teamed in the corner, finds Liston, wide open, left wing three, swish. They've scouted Duke better than that. That was a defensive breakdown right there because you don't leave Trisha Liston that wide open. Well, she's a great percentage shooter from out there. And DeJulo launches from St. Croix, and it's just short. Rebound comes down to Johnson. Up in traffic, Cotton is stuffed by Henson. Amber went to the floor and took a shoulder from Taylor Johnson. And that'll be a foul on her. Yeah, very physical play, but uh, credit Henson for getting in there and, and mixing it up and going for the loose ball. Kalia Johnson and Kendall McCravey Cooper are in for Duke for the first time. Cheatham and Wells will sit down. 
Nine minutes to go. Duke with the ball ahead by two. 24-22. Gray pulls the dribble, gives it to Johnson, to Henson, turn around, free throw line jumper off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Chippewas. They outlet it quickly to DeJulo on the right wing. She steps back, shoots the three, and it is too hard. The long rebound caroms out to Liston, who gives it to Gray. One-on-one -on -one to Johnson. Gray finishes with the right hand off the glass. Wow, just a, a beautiful take. A little bit slower player in front of her. Went right into the body. No chance for Taylor Johnson None. to stop that. 26 to 22, 820 to go. Bradford backs it in. Now dishes out. The three ball on the way is no good for Green, and it ends up out of bounds. It'll stay with Central as Elizabeth Williams returns. Henson will leave. Johnson will leave for the Chippewas, and Kirby Tam, the point guard, will return. 8.13 to go, 26-22, Duke by four. Central inbounds to Bradford, middle of the floor. She's their best scorer at over 20 points a game. Yeah, I was talking to Dee Kantner, the official, during that last break in the action. And there's a whistle. Offensive foul? Hook. Well, how about that? Don't really see that very often, but... Uh, no, it's on Elizabeth. Oh, it was on Elizabeth. Yeah, Duke thought that was going to be called against uh, the Central Michigan player but they flipped it. Okay, so Cheatham's going to have to come back in. So the hooking motion was actually an elbow motion. Williams will sit down with the two fouls. And most likely, rest of the half. 8.05 to go. Green to Bradford, deep in the right corner, off the inbound, one-on-one -on -one with Liston. She crashes into Cooper, and Kendall will get the foul going for the block shot. Well, it's going to be interesting now. Watch Central Michigan with Elizabeth Williams and her shot-blocking prowess not in the game. Now, Cooper's shown uh, that she can also block shots, but they are going to really try to go inside. So anyway, finish the thought on the official at the free throw line here. Yeah, just a conversation with Dee Kantner about uh, a lack of a no-call. And a lot of times you don't want your players talking to officials, but a player of this caliber having a conversation could lead to uh, quicker whistles in the future. Rache Jackson is in for Cooper. Bradford missed the first free throw. So the Blue Devil lead is four with exactly eight minutes to play in the first half. Bradford's left-handed free throw is no good, so she came away empty. Yeah, Liston nice. grabs it for Duke. Over to Gray on the right wing. Back to Liston, back to Gray. Drawing the double team to Cheatham. Now inside it goes Johnson deflected out of bounds, and Kalia Johnson was wide open on the left wing. That'll bring us to our eight-minute timeout, 7.49 to play. Half number one from the University of the Virgin Islands, the Paradise Jam. On now, as you can see, don't you love technology? Yeah, no problem. There we go. How are the girls? Business is tough, but with great offers at Avis.com, we give you the space to turn your business trip into a bizcation. Avis, it's your space. We are World Vision, and we believe in children. We believe in God's calling to share our lives with them, to share a meal, to share water, to share love, to share a full life. If you believe, share with a child today at worldvision.org slash share. Blue Devils inbound in the front court on the side. Liston 
throws it inside. Rashad Jackson finishes off the glass from the right side. Yeah, great position and heads up play by Liston not to panic in the corner and find the inside. Duke by six, spin move for Bradford results in a block shot for Adira Cheatham. Duke will take it the other way. Gray threads the needle. Odera catches, lays it in with the left hand. Wow, athletic. I mean, defensive on one end, runs the court. Amazing. And a terrific pass by her senior point guard. Odera Cheatham with eight. And Morgan, we've seen her improve every game. Well, it, she's long, she's athletic, she runs the floor, she, she respects the game, and she listens, she's coachable. And there's a foul on Chelsea Gray, knocking Jasmine Green off her feet. That'll be Gray's first. But all of these young ladies, uh, certainly that are wearing the Duke uniform, uh, you know, we get to be around them when they do scout and, and the way the coaching staff uh, uh, educates them and it's to, to us it's it really is amazing they do get better every game free throw for green is no good Cheatham will grab the rebound and outlet it to Kalia Johnson yeah we, we talk about Cheatham she, I mean she really played well at Marquette and it looks like she's well on her way today yep, played well yesterday yep. and she's playing better today green or uh, gray drives it Banks it off the glass from yeah. the left side of the baseline. You just don't see many players that use the glass like Gray. Beautiful. 32-22. Blue Devils up by 10. This is their biggest lead. Down low, Bracey slams into Cheatham, yeah. and she traveled. Well, and Cheatham now, I mean, she's shown the ability to block shots, and she was setting her up right there. Duke has a chance to extend the advantage to a dozen. 6.25 to go in the half. Gray into the front court, directing traffic. She moves left, now right. Driving baseline, sees the window, hooks the pass to Cheatham. Outside, Liston, wing three left, good. I tell you, a lot of traffic. Cheatham saw Trish. I didn't see that pass coming. Beautiful. 11 for Liston. The lead is 13. Down low, the layup is good from the left block for Jasmine Bracey. Yeah, Coach P in the pregame, one of the concerns, penetrating guards in addition to the post, and it happened right there. Gray into the front court. Duke by 11, 35 to 24. Cheatham at the high post, outside to Gray. And she goes down low. Kalia Johnson posts up, lays it, oh, almost up and in. And offensive rebound. Kalia tries it again. It's no good. And it's knocked out of bounds by Central Michigan. Uh, Kalia with a couple of O boards there and just unlucky. Rolled all the way around the rim on the first attempt. Looked like it was going to drop and spun out. Chloe Wells will come in for her. Taylor Johnson is back in for Central. She replaces LaDuke. Yeah, I talked a lot about uh, Rache Jackson and Kalia Johnson yesterday. Defensive effort in the second half. Inside it goes. Cheatham missed it from no feet off the entry pass. It'll stay with Duke. And I guess she missed a, with the wrong part of the glass when she was aiming for it because it was wide open. Down low, Wells off the glass. Good from the left wing. Yeah, going in, going in with the trees. Chloe Wells, nice. She has three. The lead is a Baker's dozen for Duke with 5.20 to go. Driving, dishing, the pass is tipped, and it'll end up out of bounds. Gray touched it last. The Chippewas will keep it. Crystal Bradford will come back in, replacing Johnson. Bradford is their leading scorer at over 21 points a game. She has six this afternoon. 37 to 24, Blue Devils. Chippewas shooting left to right as you look in. Green gives it to Bradford, middle of the floor. One-on-one -on -one with Jackson. She throws it underneath. Bracey backs it in and lays it, lays it in off the glass. Yeah, Trish in pretty good position, but did not want a foul coming over the back. Gray drives to the basket, lays it up, no good. Rache Jackson, offensive put back, gives it back to Gray, who lays it in from the left side, and that will bring another Central Michigan timeout. Looks like some heavy contact. And let's see, we are going to stay here. A uh, bit of confusion. And yeah, Jasmine Bracey, it looks like she may have taken an elbow up high and, and went down. And was that not a timeout? Apparently not. Blue Devils thought it was. Central Michigan said, well, no. 
We right. didn't call a timeout, so they have to scramble back onto the court quickly. I'm pretty sure the whistle was for the player that was down on the baseline. Ah, 39-26. Duke's on top. Bradford inside the lane, outside to Julo. Oh, and there's a hand check foul. They're going to get Jackson? No, wow. they're going to get Gray. Boy, Maggie timing quick on the whistle there. Well, and, and it's like Coach P said in the pregame yesterday against Xavier, there, were, there was a lot of contact with no whistles. And the new rules state that you can't do that. That's a version of the new rules. So maybe they're waking up. Well, and Timon, the least experience of the officials, so she's going by the book, the new book. The free throw is no good. And the entry pass is sloppy, and the Chippewas pick it up. Bradford gives it to DeJulo, middle of the floor. She'll go to Green. Three ball on the way. Left wing is flat and off the mark. And Duke will take it the other way with 4.25 to go. Jones finds Liston on the left side. She drives baseline, and there's the hand check foul. And that's what uh, Coach was talking about in the pregame. Liston doesn't have to stay along the perimeter, took it along the baseline, and they had the foul. Jewel Cotton was late getting there. And that's all she could do, her second personal foul. Bracey comes back in for Michigan. Jewel Cotton will sit down. Bracey, the Chippewa post player, at 6-2. Wells catches the inbound and between the circles, 4.18 to go. She passes right wing to uh, Jackson, now baseline to Cheatham. Odira waits for somebody to break to the ball, so she'll just drive to the basket and miss the layup from the right side. I mean, DeJulo, is, it's a huge mismatch. It was the right play, just not the right result. It rolled out. Down low it goes, bad pass. DeJulo threw it behind Tam. And that will bring us to our final media timeout of the first half. 3.59 to play from St. Thomas. It's second-ranked Duke, 39. Cent giant TV production truck in a compact, portable video production system. New Tech TriCaster has everything you need for a network-style video production. Camera switching, graphics, special effects, virtual sets, and more. You can stream your production live to the Internet and record up to eight separate channels of HD video all in one system. New Tech TriCaster. It's a television studio in a box. Find out more at NewTech.com. visit my island, the United States Virgin Islands. Discover how life is meant to be. Call your travel agent today. Final three minutes in 58 seconds of the first half from the Virgin Islands on this day after Thanksgiving. Blue Devils in charge by a baker's dozen as Liston throws it down low to uh, Jones. She drives baseline left and is fouled. And that'll be the second one on the post player, Bracey. Oh, nice position by Jackson waiting for the pass. And Jones decides to go ahead and go in there. and She'll get free throw opportunities. Alexis Jones with one bucket so far in the half. Left-handed free throw is perfect. Wells and Cooper return. Cheatham and Gray will sit down. Second shot for Jones is perfect as well. 41 to 26. Jackson almost with a steal in the backcourt. Bradford 
finds Green on the left wing. Back to DeJulo. Deep three on the way is off the mark. She tries to follow her shot, but Cooper took it away from her. She'll outlet it to Jones. Down low, Jackson on the run. Pass was too far in front of her. Bajuri Turner is back in. And one of the starters in the backcourt. 5'6", senior from Warren, Michigan. She's going to replace DeJulo who was on fire from beyond the arc in the early going, but she has cooled off considerably. Yeah, nice job of getting out and contesting. She was wide open earlier, not so much now. Green on the dribble, has it deflected by Wells. Jackson picks it up, throws it to Wells one-on-one, -on -one, fakes the pull-up, drives to the basket, and misses right under the hoop on the right side. That is the third no-footer that has spun out for Duke. Three ball on the way for Tam, no good. And that should be on Jackson, but it's not. Wow, it's going to go on Central Michigan because Rache Jackson just cleared Jewel Cotton out. No, they did call it on Rache. That was, that was obvious even from our location. Cotton will have free throws. A freshman from Harper Woods, Michigan. And the free throw is no good. Tam keeps the rebound alive. Cotton picks it up. They throw it to the corner. And out of the middle of the floor, Turner running things for the time being. Gives it to Cotton, back to Turner, to the baseline right, to Green. Back to the middle of the floor to Turner. They reverse it to the left side, Tam. Now baseline, Cotton inside. Bradford layup good with the left hand. Yeah, they didn't. No switch for Duke, mismatch from Bradford on Wells. 41 to 28, Blue Devils, 2.23 to go. Jones fires the pass, complete layup good for Tricia Liston, and the radar gun registered 95 miles an hour on that bullet. You're a baseball guy, and that was uh, from the mound, full bore, fastball. Sign that kid up. She gets drafted if she can throw like that. Great Not, catch. Too. Yeah, it was. 43 to 28. Bradford on the other end with the jump hook. No good. Wells clears it out. Two on one. Bounce ahead. Jones finished with nice. the right hand. Way to run the floor. Way to get rewarded. Timeout, Central Michigan. Sue Guevara not happy with the way her team reacted getting back, but uh, this just in, Alexis Jones is quick. Yeah, very quick and deceptively so. Looks like she's just kind of cruising along, and next thing you know, she's wide open and out in front. Bradford, we talked about volume shooting. She's been kind of tame, three of five. She's got eight points, uh, two of three from three-point range, but now's the time when, I mean, you got 149 before the break. She's not taking a lot of shots. I think she's going to be calling for the basketball here. Well, something needs to happen if Central's going to stay in this. Yeah, just to kind of get you guys up to date, eight points for Cheatham, four of eight from the floor. She's got six rebounds. Uh, we were wondering about Gray's assist. She's only at four, uh, nine total points. She's four of eight from the floor, but playing oh. solid. And Alexis Jones got caught in the backcourt with... Uh, body contact excessively apparently against the Central Michigan player. That is her second foul. Gray and Williams also have two fouls. The free throw is good. Missouri Turner is at the free throw line. Second one is good. 45 to 30, Blue Devils. 1.45 to go in the half. Jones dribbles to the left corner. Blue Devils shooting right to left. Jackson draws the double team on the wing, finds Liston, free throw line jumper, swish. Hey, it's a foul shot. She's pretty good at those. 15 for the senior from suburban Chicago. 47 to 30, inside pass intercepted. Cooper tipped it. Jones will take it the other way. Lex drives middle. Look out now. She will take it up left-handed with the spin. No good. Cooper finishes. She cannot after she grabbed the rebound, and now there's a held ball. Kendall Cooper did a nice job trailing the play to get the rebound, but she couldn't finish. She tried to use her right hand from the left side. Yeah, both, both post players uh, cheat him and Cooper running the floor well, and, and you're gonna get opportunities, just gotta be able to finish. 
1-10 to play. Blue Devils by 17. Turner into the front court, working against Wells. She gives it to Bradford beyond the arc at the high post. She passes to the corner to DeJulo, back to Turner. Now to Bradford, open wing, left-handed from the right side is no good. It spins out. Cotton missed the putback, and Kalia Johnson will claim it for Duke with 45 seconds to play in the half. Jackson with it on the right wing. Passes inside Cooper, spin move off Ooh. the glass, good. Wow, kind of almost like an underhand scoop to the glass, very quick. 49 to 30 with 30 seconds to play. Bradford trying to work on Johnson. Kalia wouldn't let her go anywhere. They throw it around to the left side, cross court right, it goes to Bradford. Step back three on the way is a brick and Liston is there for the rebound. Yeah, nice deep by Duke team. Timeout, Blue Devils to set up uh, an end of half play with 16.9 seconds to go. Yeah, take Obviously, this is not for this situation. This is for the future. Oh, absolutely. We see it quite a bit. Uh, and fans at home, if you're watching on YouTube or you're, you're listening on GoDuke.com or our flagship 620, you might be saying, why do this with 17 seconds remaining? And it's exactly right. It's about situations you're going to face Maybe ACC, ACC tournament, NCAA tournament. Uh, you you want to run a play. It's a great opportunity to do it, and it'll be interesting to see what they draw up. Jackson, Johnson, Cooper, Wells, and Liston, the five in charge of executing this play. Liston catches the inbound from Wells, dribbles into the front court, bounces it to Jackson high post, back to Liston. There's the step back three left side just short. Johnson follows the rebound, open from free throw line, out to Wells, long three off the glass, no good. Ball is loose, Jackson picks it up, off the glass, no good. Cooper to follow too late. So Duke had plenty of opportunities. And it looked like Roche had a little more time, but I mean, when you're in the heat of the moment, you don't know where the clock is and you need to get it up there, but uh, great crashing on the boards. Halftime from St. Thomas. Blue Devils on top of Central Michigan, 49 to 30. Halftime show begins right after this. Fish food. Can't forget the fish food. Let's go.
Uh, we're going to be cruising out to uh, Buck Island. And uh, we're going to have a great little snorkel stop to get you all suited up with snorkel gear. And um, if you need anything at all, once again, my name's Matt, Richard, and uh, Cassandra. And uh, we're going to turn the music back up and uh, enjoy your time. Sun, <laughs> um, nice waters, amazing views, everything. Um, the warm weather <laughs> from being from Syracuse. Snow, a lot of snow, cold, harsh winds. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm here with my team, so it's just really uh, fun to be here with them. Uh, a little bit of turtles, hopefully no sharks or anything. But, um, you know, just the aquatic life. We're at the 2013 Paradise Jam. In 14 years here on St. Thomas, we've done a lot of awesome things, but never something like this. This is the water jetpack new here to St. Thomas. Um, anyone who's ever dreamt of flying, ever wanted to learn how to fly, this is about as close as it gets. On an introductory flight, you're going to be porpoising like a dolphin, you're going to be running on the water, and of course flying high like Buzz Lightyear. So those are kind of the three things you're going to be doing in an introductory flight. Right him up, right him up, right him up a little, right him up. There you go. Just like that. That's exactly where I want you. Right there. Very nice. Oh, you're ready to fly. What I want you to do now is slowly bring your arms up till just your feet are in the water. And now that you're there, just start walking with those legs. You're walking on water. Okay, so all you got to do to go underwater is you're going to bring both hands down into the water. When you're ready to come back up, bring both hands back up. <laughs> Very nice. People who have ever gone parasailing or jet skiing, anything like that, this is going to be completely different. This is the newest adventure basically here in St. Thomas. So you guys actually have this uh, great deal of flying at $100 at discounted price all the way up until November 30th. So just mention Paradise Jam and we'll definitely give you guys that rate. Definitely was one of the craziest things I've ever done, Mark. Thanks for letting me come out and Our fly pleasure. with you. Our Looks pleasure. like I earned some wings. You have definitely earned your jetpack wings, so uh, you're a natural. Come back again soon. All right, all you Paradise Jammers, come out and check out the St. Thomas Jet Riders. Welcome to the United States Virgin Islands. We know you'll enjoy your stay in one of the most beautiful places in the Caribbean. We invite you to visit all three islands. St. Croix, St. John, and St. Thomas. St. Croix offers some of the most incredible dive sites in the Caribbean. Explore the pier, a shipwreck, the wall, and even go on a night dive. And with seven flags having flown over this Caribbean jewel, St. Croix offers one of the most diverse cultures in all of the Caribbean. Want to hike, swim, and explore an underwater trail and an incredible vista all in the same day? Then you can't miss St. John. With two-thirds of the island dedicated as a national park, it's easy to find a view that takes your breath away. St. Thomas offers some of the best shopping deals in the Caribbean and the U.S. Virgin Islands duty-free limit is $1,600, so be sure to take advantage of the savings. 
If a romantic destination wedding is in your future, plan your hassle-free nuptials in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Don't forget to let your guests know that there's no passport required for U.S. citizens. For more information on the USVI, log on to visitusvi.com or download our free My Virgin Islands smartphone app to learn more about things to do, restaurants, shops, and much more. Explore the endless unscripted vacation opportunities that await you. Thank you for visiting the United States Virgin Islands, St. Croix, St. John, and St. Thomas. Welcome to the Paradise Jam. Each November, I like to take my Paradise Jam family down to the one and only golf course on St. Thomas, Mahogany Run. Let's head down to the first tee. Mahogany Run is being the only golf course on the island uh, designed by two world famous golf course ar architects, Tom Fazio and his dad, George have uh, some really unique and exciting holes. We have the Devil's Triangle, which is uh, maybe three of the most beautiful holes in golf, looking over the uh, Atlantic and the Caribbean Ocean. Uh, holes where you're hitting, you know, 125 to 150 yards from tee boxes to over the ocean out to a small uh, tee complex. Everybody finds the course. Uh, it's challenging, forgiving in areas, and, and, and truly uh, unforgiving in certain areas. I mean, obviously you can tell who the basketball players are. They're a little taller than most of the island people, but it, it, it's wonderful for the course. It's wonderful for the economy down here. It's wonderful for, for Mahogany Run to have, uh, have people like that, that down here doing a doing something for the, for the community down here and, and, and being able to host them at, at, at our golf courses is, is, is really, it's a pleasure to have them down here. During the Paradise Jam, not only can you enjoy spectacular views like this, but for the right price, you can own a beautiful villa out here at Botany Bay. Out here today at Villa Witta, which is a $25 million property that spans over 15,000 square feet of usable space. It's on four acres on a waterfront lot, and it's inside the Botany Bay Preserve, which is managed by the Timbers Resorts based out of Carbondale, Colorado. They pick the nicest 400 acres on the island. It overlooks the Mermaid's Chair, the west end of the island, and out over to Calabria, Puerto Rico, and the Spanish Virgin Islands. The uh, entire home is based around the lifestyle that a pirate would probably enjoy. It certainly shows it in the collection of artifacts. It's sort of a modern day pirate has this fortress where he keeps all the bounty that he's collected. And I think that's really how the owner looks at it. Also the quality here, the workmanship inside, it's second to none, absolutely no expense spared. There's a lot of antiques and original artifacts. There's actual treasure chests that were recovered from pirate ships, original cannons and several 17th century antiques. There's actually a chandelier from a Russian opera house in here that was disassembled and reassembled here. And obviously the location is incredible. It's probably one of the best home sites in the Caribbean. It has to be experienced to be believed. It's really more of like a fairy tale type atmosphere than anything I've ever seen. The U.S. Virgin Islands is uniquely set up for people to take advantage of the tax benefits. There's no state or local taxes other than federal taxes for residents. Anybody who resides here gets to take advantage of that. And the price points are all across the board from $300,000 to $25 million. There's pretty much something for everybody. Give us a call at USVI Sotheby's International Realty. We'd be happy to help you online or sotheby'srealtyusvi.com is our website.
Imagine the power of a giant TV production truck in a compact, portable video production system. NewTek TriCaster has everything you need for a network-style video production. Camera switching, graphics, special effects, virtual sets, and more. You can stream your production live to the internet and record up to eight separate channels of HD video all in one system. NewTek TriCaster. It's a television studio in a box. Find out more at NewTek.com. visit my island, the United States Virgin Islands. Discover how life is meant to be. Call your travel agent today. You are just in time for the second half. Blue Devils have the ball as we begin. They throw it down low, does Gray to Elizabeth Williams, and the layup with the left hand is good. Just like the first half, they start off going to the post, but remember, Elizabeth had to sit the last eight minutes with the two fouls. 51 to 30, Duke. Off balance shot for Bracey is no good. Trisha Liston will grab her eighth rebound. She throws ahead, and Jewel Cotton deflected. It was intended for Alexis Jones. So it's Gray, Liston, Jones, Williams, and Cooper, the five to begin the second half. Off the inbound, Jones takes one giant step, puts it on the floor, leaves it for Williams. Jumper from about eight feet is good. Middle of the lane. And a nice unselfish basketball, and Lex recognizing the double team. Throw into her teammate. Nice shot by Elizabeth. Eight points for the junior post player from Virginia Beach, 53 to 30. And Duke on top. Central Michigan entered today one and three. Ooh. And down low it goes as an elbow was cast, and there is a reject for Williams. Liston picks it up and throws too far ahead. Chelsea Gray cannot. Well, yes, she did. She got there in time wow. to save it. Williams hustles over, falls into the uh, press row here, and saves it to Liston. Well, how about Gray running up the aisle at the end of the court, almost hitting the partition? Three ball for Gray after all that is no good, and Jones can't get there in time to save it from going out of bounds. Well, great hustle on Gray and Elizabeth Williams' part there. And Blue Devils entering play, 6-0. Central Michigan defeated UMass to begin the year. Since then, they've fallen to Kentucky, Marquette, and yesterday to Kansas by five in the second game of our tournament bracket here. Kansas is the Blue Devils' opponent tomorrow. Chippewas pass it around. Bradford drives and is cut off. She goes to Green, who passes over to DeJulo. Back to Green as the shot clock expires and the three rims out. Jewel Cotton with the rebound. Her shot is rejected by Cooper. But Central keeps it until Elizabeth Williams steps in front to steal the entry pass. Off to Jones. Lob to Williams. She could not catch in traffic because Cotton knocked it away from her. All right, looked like a sure three-foot bucket for Central Michigan down low. And Cooper able to just come out of nowhere. And she's shown that she can absolutely be a shot blocker. She catches the low entry pass from Gray and gives it to Jones. Two minutes into the second half, Jones to Liston, who fakes the drive. Back to Jones. They lob it to the free throw line, Williams. Down low, Cooper over the double team. The shot is off balance and no good. And Central will take it the other way. DeJulo throws a dangerous pass to Green over to Bradford, who moves around Cooper. The finger roll won't go. Ball is loose. Bradford picks it up, misses off the glass. Cooper claims it for Duke. She passes out quickly to Jones, looking to split two defenders. Jones does, tosses it up, no good, and draws the foul. Well, crossed her over, and DeJulo is just trying to stop the, the layup, which she did, but she fouled. First foul on Nikki DeJulo. Alexis Jones will go to the free throw line. Sophomore from suburban Dallas has seven points now after that. Taylor Johnson returns for the Chippewas. She is going to replace Cotton. Johnson, a 5'11 senior from Belding, Michigan. Second shot for Jones is good. 
She has eight. Blue Devils have Trisha Liston in double figures so far, but four more knocking on the door. Chippewas moving down low. Gray will steal it from the post player. She will push it left side. No look at pass complete. Layup is good for Elizabeth Williams. Wow, Elizabeth Williams just absolutely put the pedal to the metal there and just scooted out in front of the Chippewa D. Timeout, Central Michigan, and we'll take one as well. 17.03 to play. It is Duke 57 and the Chippewas 30. Imagine the power of a giant TV production truck in a compact, portable video production system. New Tech TriCaster has everything you need for a network-style video production. Camera switching, graphics, special effects, virtual sets, and more. You can stream your production live to the Internet and record up to eight separate channels of HD video all in one system. New Tech TriCaster. It's a television studio in a box. Find out more at newtech.com. Do they not have... And the shot for three is blocked by Elizabeth Williams. Central picks it up and lays it in. Taylor Johnson was in the right spot. 30, or 57 to 32. Liston gives it to Jones on the right wing. She bounces down low. And Cooper's pass was too strong for Williams as they were trying to go block to block. And apparently Central deflected it. Good break for Duke there. Hot pass. Gray lobs it to Williams. Back to Gray. Jump shot. Baseline right. Good. Chelsea Gray into double figures with 11. So that's three Duke players so far. Nice job. Baseline out of bounds. Just into Williams. Steps inbounds. Hits the jumper. And Jones and Cheatham have eight. Jump shot no good on the other end. Williams was fouled on the rebound. That'll be on Bradford trying to go over the back. That is her second. Blue Devils in control, 59 to 32. They've opened the second half with a 10 to two run. Uh, they're looking fantastic, good rebounding numbers. Like to see the assists get up, but maybe that's gonna change in the post. When Gray. They take a Drives it, dishes it. Williams shuffles her feet on the right block. That is traveling. Maybe there's going to be some adjustment because we think right now Gray's got at least two more assists than she's being credited for. But semantics. 59-32. Blue Devils on top. Bradford throws it middle of the floor as she almost stepped out of bounds. DeJulo gives it to Taylor. Pull up jumper left side is an air ball. Liston is there for another rebound, and she's tied up from behind. Nice hustle play there for Jessica Green. Yeah, didn't see Green on the other side. Brought the ball down low, and she reached in, tied her up. And that will bring us to our media timeout, 15:42. Imagine the power of a giant TV production truck in a compact, portable video production system. 
new Tech TriCaster has everything you need for a network style video production. Camera switching, graphics, special effects, virtual sets, and more. You can stream your production live to the internet and record up to eight separate channels of HD video all in one system. New Tech TriCaster, it's a television studio in a box. Find out more at newtech.com. Come visit my island, the United States Virgin Islands. Discover how life is meant to be. Call your travel agent today. Fifty nine thirty two. Blue Devils on top. Central Michigan plays it out of bounds right in front of us as they shoot the basket to your left as you look in. Johnson caught in the double team. Gives it to Bradford, head of the key. She's their leading scorer at 21. She passes to Johnson, who traveled as she was in the middle of a ball fake. Now, that's at least nine rebounds for Tricia Liston. Is that what they have for Let's her? Let's take a look at her line. Uh, 15 points. They have her at 11. Oh, 11 rebounds. Okay. All right. That's a double-double for her. And there's a swish for Alexis Jones. She is into double figures now with 11 points. So four Duke players in double figures. Odara Cheatham has a chance. She has eight. And there's a reach-in foul against Chelsea Gray as Bradford was driving to the basket. That will be Gray's third foul. So let's see. They had Liston with seven at the half. So she has four rebounds in the first five minutes. Chloe Wells will come in for Gray. And she's coming off, you know, 22 points in the first game. Solid play. So uh, most valuable tournament player, even though it's not an official tournament, well within her grasp. Bradford drives left, steps back, forces the jumper from the baseline. It's an air ball. And the whistle blows on the rebound. That will be against Duke for over the back. Um, let's see, Cooper perhaps. Yeah, good, good positioning by Duke, but the shot was so far off. Allow the Chippewas to get in better position. Second foul against the freshman, and the free throw is no good. Jordan LeDuc returns, a 5'11 senior from Flushing, Michigan. In the game yesterday against Xavier, the free throw is good. Almost no upperclassmen. Today, it's the reverse. Almost all juniors and seniors for the Chippewas. Wells banks it in. She hit the front of the rim, the glass, and then it fell through from the left baseline. Living right. Good English there. 64 to 33, Duke. Bracey. Gives it off to Green on the right side. They thread the needle and Liston fouled Taylor Johnson to prevent the easy layup. Yeah, good entry pass. First foul against Liston. And there are, there are three freshmen on this roster. One of them is redshirting. Three, four sophomores and everybody else, upper class, with well, a total of 15. Well, Central Michigan tied with Kansas at half. They ended up losing by five, and early on in this ball game, with the three-point shot, able to take the lead against Duke, but haven't been able to get much else going. Wells gives it to Cooper beyond the arc. She throws it right side to Jones. Back to Cooper, head of the key three on the way, off the side of the rim. And there's a foul on the rebound. That's going to be on Liston, I think. No. Yeah, yeah, it will be. That is her second. Central led by four. About seven minutes into this. And now Duke is on top by 29. Chippewas on offense, right to left. Johnson on the right wing. Gives it to Bracey at the free throw line. She's the post player working against Chloe Wells. Dishes out to DeJulo. The three ball is short. And Central saved the rebound, but right to Kalia Johnson. 
So Duke will take it. So we have Kalia Johnson for the Blue Devils, Taylor Johnson for the Chippewas. Jones down low to Williams, inside Cooper, power move, fade away off the glass, no good from the left side. And Central's Johnson will claim the carom. Green bounces to uh, DeJulo, three ball is good, and the Blue Devils fouled her beyond the arc. Yeah, DeJulo hot in the first half, but just four of 11 on the game, three of nine from three now, four of 10 from beyond the arc, and she'll get the extra. Alexis Jones committed the foul. That'll be her third. Odara Cheatham will return for Kendall McCravey Cooper in the freshman for freshman switch. The Julo's free throw is good. That gives her 17 of her team's 39. 13 and a half to go, 64-39, Blue Devils. Wells, middle of the floor, over to Johnson on the right wing. Now to Cheatham at the high post, driving left, taking it up left, off the glass, no good, but she's fouled. That'll be on Taylor Johnson. Her second. All right, they're going to be able to take a look. And I mean, Holden Bradford right now to just eight points, but three of 12 shooting. Really frustrated their star player. And again, Coach, if you remember, Coach McCauley said she is a WNBA player. First free throw for Cheatham is good. She came in averaging 21 points a game. Duke has done a terrific job on her. She had 19 yesterday against Kansas. Second foul shot is good, so Odara Cheatham is the fifth Blue Devil in double figures now. Yep, solid, solid performance team-wide. Very balanced performance as well. Five in double figures and only 66 total points. The drive and dish results in a brick down low for Bracey. Williams will grab it for Duke, who hands off to Wells. She's going to drive right, open, step back, shoot the wing jumper, and drain it. Chloe Wells with seven. Maybe she'll get into double figures also. 68 to 39, DeJulo shoots the three on the left side, no good. Johnson tips the rebound to Wells, outlets it to Jones. One on one to the basket, the layup is good, and DeJulo oh. fouled her after the shot. And she, she, she went ahead and gave her the layup. She wasn't gonna foul. It looked like that. Oh yeah. And she's frustrated. She's like, what are you kidding? She backed off and then got called for the whistle after the basket. Yeah, it looked like she held up because she didn't want to foul, and Lex was going to have the layup, but maybe their feet got tangled. I don't know. That was weird. Jones will take it. Left-hand free throw is perfect. 14 for Alexis Jones. She will go out. Rache Jackson comes in. 12.44 to go. It is 71 to 39. Just nine points for Central in the second half. DeJulo catches the pass, immediately double team and throws it away. Rache Jackson with the interception, bounces to Kalia Johnson. The layup is good, presidential style. Jackson to Johnson. 73-39, <laughs> Blue Devils press. They get it to DeJulo on the left wing. She throws it cross court right. Johnson loads up the three, and it is too strong. She follows her own shot, takes it up in traffic, now dishes off. LeDuc, no good, follows her own shot, rejected out of bounds by Williams. And it'll be Central's ball. Presidential, very nice. What else do you call it with Jackson and Johnson? <laughs> Turner comes back in. Johnson catches the inbound for Central. Turner drives it, loses it. Oh, Kalia Johnson got called for a reach in. Trying to go for the strip away steal. Instead, she'll pick up her first foul with exactly 12 minutes left. 73 to 39, Duke. Johnson, the inbound, lowers her shoulder. Williams refused to move. Johnson lost the dribble out of bounds. And that will bring us to our 12-minute timeout. 11.57 to play. It is second-ranked Duke, 73, Central Michigan, 39. Spectacular. 
just the beginning at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. Discover a place where turquoise waters meet clear blue skies, where fine dining and poolside bars delightfully coexist, where fun and relaxation are an art form. A Marriott dream vacation awaits you here on the island of St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's all here at Frenchman's Reef and Morningstar Marriott Beach Resort. UVI is closer than you think. At UVI, the beach is closer than you think. At UVI, the professors are closer than you think. At UVI, your success is closer than you think. The University of the Virgin Islands is closer than you think. Call us today or visit our website. Welcome to Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas. The Caribbean's most entertaining beach resort. Experience the Caribbean's most entertaining beach resort. Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. No passport. Seventy-three thirty-nine. Blue Devils in charge with 11.57 to go. Amber Henson is back in. Out there with Rache Jackson, Kalia Johnson, Odara Cheatham, and Chloe Wells. Yeah, Devils 30 of 57, Steve, 53%. Solid. And it'll be interesting to see how this five performs together. Jackson down low. And let's see, Cheatham couldn't handle the pass. Looked like she was held, but apparently not. And so it'll be Central's ball out of bounds. You know, this is the time to work on various combinations. And there's so many that the coaching staff will have an opportunity to see. Shovel pass down low, complete to Cotton. It's no good. And Amber Henson will claim the carom for Duke. So it's Johnson and Wells in the backcourt with Rache Jackson on the wing and then Cheatham and Henson, the more traditional post players. Johnson to Henson beyond the arc. Wells is gonna drive left, give it right to Henson. She takes Johnson to the basket, flips it up, no good. Kalia Johnson with a strong offensive rebound. She can't go with it though and ah. is caught in the lane. She needed to make that pass about a second and a half earlier. Yeah. Well, I tell you, the, the impressive play by Kalia Johnson this early season is getting her more and more playing time because you always wonder when you have this much talent on a team, you know, where are the minutes going to come for everybody? But uh, KJ, I guess it's KJ2 now, but she has really done a nice job. Johnson to the basket, and her shot is just rejected and yanked away. Swallowed by <laughs> Odara Cheatham. And on the other end, Wells misses. Central will claim it. Ball is loose. This could turn into bumper cars yeah, here if we're not it. careful. Down low, LaDuke will lay it in. Yeah, busted play, but Duke needs to get back on D. Looked like it was going to go the other way, and Chippewa is able to get behind the Devils. 10-20 to go. 73-41. to 41. Wells over to Jackson, beyond the arc, left side. Henson at the high post. Now right it goes to Wells, inside to Cheatham, immediately double teamed. Outside to uh, Jackson, LeDuc swatted it away, so the Blue Devils will have seven seconds to shoot. Crystal Bradford is back in for Central Michigan. And Chelsea Gray is going to return for Duke to bring uh, some semblance of order to this. Uh, Tricia Liston is back in for Johnson. Yeah, it was a little helter-skelter both sides. Gray will toss it in. 30 minutes down, 10 minutes remain. Blue Devils by 32. Jackson to the basket. She's cut off, and did she step out of bounds? She did. Yep, that was on the far side, and Crystal Bradford got all tangled up. Looks like she took a whack to the chin. Well, if, if you see, if, 
if Rache Jackson gets the advantage of you coming around the screen and you don't see it coming, that'll hurt. Central into the front court. They shoot right to left. Turner drives and dishes. LaDuke fakes. Can't shoot. Goes to Johnson. And Amber Henson hand checked her in the corner. Wow. That'll be her second foul. One and one for Taylor Johnson. The 5'11 senior from Belding, Michigan. Right handed shot is too hard. And Central tipped it out of bounds. Maggie Timon agreed with us, and it'll be Duke's ball. Yeah, rebounding numbers look fantastic, Steve. You alluded to it at halftime, but it's 42-25, Blue Devils. Oh, now, all right. Yeah, that's Duke's ball. That is the right call. Sue Guevara, the veteran Central Michigan coach, is not in agreement, but there was no question that one of her players knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, came over the back, easy call. Gray gets it into the front court, drives on Turner, takes it all the way to the basket, and has it deflected. Chippewas will take it the other way. Cotton against Cheatham. Reverse layup is good. Odera Cheatham had good position there. That's all Cotton could do. Yeah, I mean, Cotton went straight at her. It is a 30-point Blue Devil lead, 73-43. Henson catches it, powers in, goes up and under, flips it up, no good. I mean, she had position. She didn't need to do that. She could have taken it straight to the glass and made it. Bradford no-looks it. LeDuc, three ball, good from the left baseline. Jordan LeDuc with five. 73 to 46, inside nine minutes to go. Oh, and there's another whistle. It's a holding on Cotton, apparently away from the ball. Yeah, hanging on to Cheatham. So Henson, Cheatham, and Jackson will leave. Jones, Cooper, and Williams will return. Just unfair. I mean, they have so <laughs> much talent coming off the bench. Gray dishes to Cooper, finishes short with the right hand, tips it up, no good. And Central will take it the other way. 73-46, 835. Bradford to the basket, high off the glass, no good. Gets her own rebound, misses again, and she was fouled. That'll be Kendall McCravey Cooper's third foul. Crystal Bradford came in averaging 21. She has eight and her percentage is not impressive. Three for 15. Left hand free throw is good. Well, it should be three for 14, giving her two attempts on that last one before the miss. Bradford's free throw is good. So she made both of them and she has 10. She and DeJulo are the two Chippewas in double figures. And there'll be a reach-in foul on Turner. 73 to 48. That will be the sixth team foul on Central. Gray in front of her own bench goes with the lob too tall for Elizabeth Williams to catch. So you know it was up in the air. Yeah, sideline out of bounds lob. They work on that. That's a great play. They haven't, I haven't really seen it this year yet. Uh, that one a little too strong even for Elizabeth Williams. Central will have another possession. Bradford on the hippity hop trying to lose Jones and she can't do it. She'll throw it cross court. LaDuke loads up the three again. No good from the right wing. Jones catches the long rebound, gives it to Liston on the run. Layup left hand, good. Trisha Liston with her first bucket in the second half. She has 17. Three ball for Bradford is good from the right wing. 75-51, Blue Devils. Inside eight minutes to go. Jones to Williams, deep left baseline. Liston is open on the other side of the floor. Elizabeth will toss it up from the free throw line. It's short. And let's see, it'll be Central's ball out of bounds when you come back. Timeout from St. Thomas. 7.44 to play. It's the Blue Devils 75 and the Chippewas of Central Michigan 51. Uh, we're going to be cruising out to uh, 
Buck Island. And uh, we're going to have a great little snorkel stop to get you all suited up with snorkel gear. And um, if you need anything at all, so again, my name's Matt, Richard, and uh, Cassandra. And uh, we're going to turn the music back up and uh, enjoy your time. Sun, <laughs> um, nice waters, amazing views, everything. Um, the warm weather <laughs> from being from Syracuse. Snow, a lot of snow, cold, harsh winds. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm here with my team, so it's just really uh, fun to be here with them. A uh, little bit of turtles, hopefully no sharks or anything. But, um, you know, just the aquatic life. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to go in this one. Blue Devils pounding the Chippewas of Central Michigan. 75 to 51, Bradford for three. That's an air ball. Oh, Ooh. and two of her teammates went flying into the uh, padded railing behind the basket. Wow. They are all right. That could have been ugly. It could have been. The, the rail is about head high. Yeah. And tournament officials will replace the pad as play moves to the other end. And Central deflected the entry pass. So right now for Duke, it's Gray, Williams, Liston, Jones, and Cooper. And if you're wondering why the starters are in, Liston drains the three from the left wing, or baseline actually. They just came back in. They were on the bench for a long time here in the second half have a feeling that they will leave for good shortly ahead 78 to 51 Taylor Johnson misses and apparently Elizabeth Williams knocked the rebound out of bounds extensive playing time for all available Duke players this afternoon that's just a great opportunity to get minutes and play well Turner steps back and has it rejected out of bounds by Cooper <laughs> with the tomahawk <laughs> no offense to elizabeth williams who is just one of the best shot blockers in the game but it's always just with finesse and you don't really hear it when cooper blocks it it's a big smack volleyball spike right there <laughs> yeah that's a good description inside it goes johnson tosses it up no good cooper tips the rebound williams is there to claim it she gets it out to jones one-on-one -on -one. Bank shot, no good from the right side, and there'll be a whistle on the rebound. That's going to be against Duke. So let's see, that's going to be on Cooper. That's her fourth foul. Kirby Tam comes back in. She was the starting point guard. She'll replace Taylor Johnson. Odara Cheatham returns for Duke, replacing Cooper. Five Blue Devils in double figures today. Chloe Wells is closest with seven. She is not in the game right now. DeJury Turner has free throws. And it's, it is good. Now, let's see. Lane violation. Lane violation, okay, no good then. No basket. All right. 78 to 51. And 637 remaining, the number that uh, the coaching staff threw up on the board, the players picked it, was 58 under. Down low, Williams, hook shot, good after a beautiful entry pass from Chelsea Gray. That is a dozen for Elizabeth. Turner drives middle, walked and got away with it and threw it to you. That'll be a turnover as Chloe Wells will come back in. Nice hands, by the way. I was ready. Gray will go out. Wells is in. Uh, let's see. 
Kalia Johnson is in for Liston. I have a feeling those two will get the rest of the afternoon off. Jones' pass inside is no good. How many assists for Chelsea, supposedly? All right, Gray is up to eight on the helpers. I think she should be close to double digits. Yeah. But uh, they've got her at eight, 11 points. Uh, right now, rebounds, looking for it, and certainly looks like Gray is sitting with, wow, they're saying she doesn't have a rebound. Uh, yeah, she does. <laughs> Wells for three into double figures, no. Offensive rebound, put back, reverse, Cheatham won't go. Central Michigan takes it the other way with six minutes to play. Bradford off balance, down low, and she crashed into Chloe Wells. Well, I tell you, that's that's playing some ball late in the game when it's been decided, and are you going to physically give yourself up to take the charge? And Wells did. Fantastic. You mentioned it earlier in the broadcast. There's only so many minutes. And everybody wants to play, so they have to do something to earn more playing time. And that's how you do it. Johnson, left wing to Williams. Free throw line, drives it off the glass, no good, but she draws a foul. Well, and one of the other keys for the, you know for Coach McCauley is, you know, we need to get to the free throw line. And they just, they only had 10 attempts against Xavier. They're not really lighting it up as far as free throw line. And this will be just uh, attempts 10 and 11. Hmm. So they, they've hit a lot of shots though. Williams free throw is good. 33 of 68 from the floor. Hmm. That'll work. Johnson and Bracey back in for Central. Cotton and Bradford will sit down. Uh, six of 10 from three, four of those from Liston. Second one for Elizabeth is good. She will sit down probably for the rest of the day as Cooper comes back in. Yeah, Williams line, 13 points, six rebounds, and of course, numerous blocks again. At least two and perhaps three. Bracey drives it, tries to take it up on Cooper. She does, but misses the shot, and it ends up out of bounds as Taylor Johnson goes skidding into the pad back there. 81 to 52, Duke. Remember, Central Michigan led by four, six minutes into this game. Yeah, just lightning on fire from three point range. Did you love this, you know, the story of the, of the game in the early first half, but uh, cooled off a lot. Kylie Welch is in for the first time for Central Michigan, 5'4", junior from Grand Blanc, Michigan. She has it on the right side. She is the 10th Chippewa to see action today. LeDuc cut off, outside for three. It is off the mark. All right, Kirby Tam, Duke claims the rebound. Jones can't drive with 4.44 to play. Blue Devils up by 31. Johnson throws it to Wells. Another chance for three. Good, and Chloe's in double figure. Yeah, just great patience by Duke. Wait for the open player and bang. Six in double digits this afternoon. 85 to 51. And unless somebody just goes off in the final four minutes, nobody else is going to make it. Bracey drives it and lays it in from the right side. And let's see, Duke called a timeout, and we're going to use this as the media break with 4.12 to go. Final timeout from St. Thomas on this Friday afternoon. It's Duke 85, Central Michigan 53.
All right, thanks. Final 4-12 from the University of the Virgin Islands. Blue Devils in charge, 85-53 to over Central Michigan. Wells gets it in, right block Cooper up with the right hand off the glass too hard. And the rebound comes down to the Chippewas' Kirby Tam. She is going to dribble left side, pass it off to LeDuc. She is double teamed, back to Tam, inside Bracey. Outside LeDuc, baseline left three, good. Jordan LeDuc with eight. She averages just three. Only one made three-point shot all year. She's hit two today, and there's a jump shot for Cooper just inside the arc on the left wing. Nice penetration by Wells, and then the kick out to Cooper. It's usually the reverse. Cooper with four, and oh, how about the screen? That was a Johnson to Johnson screen, and Kalia took the worst of it. Uh, wow. Three ball for Welch is no good. Jackson the rebound, there's Johnson trying to take it away from her. Jackson has none of it. Dishes down low, Kalia to finish, no good, but she's fouled. Well, Central Michigan's Johnson is, you know, she's been playing hard, she's frustrated. Looked like she leaned into that screen just a little bit, and boy, I tell you, Kalia popped right back up, but that was a hard shot. Well, and Kalia, told her teammates, you have to call that screen. Yeah, there was no talking. Yeah, there was no talking going on there. They need to start yelling a little early. Free throw is good. Bracey is out for Central. And Chelsea Lynn is in for the first time, six foot freshman from Detroit. Johnson's foul shot is good. Yeah. Central Michigan in the town of Mount Pleasant. Obviously centrally located. Uh, Cheatham's got an opportunity for a double-double. Two more rebounds needed. Oh, okay. Three minutes to go. That'd be good. LeDuc, high post. Over to Tam, left side. Down low, Lynn. Out to Johnson. Off the glass. Good. Good ball movement that time by the Chippewas. 89 to 58 with 235 to go. Cooper backs it in, turns it up, no good. She's fouled. Done I was going to say, done a nice job from the line when they've gotten there. 12 of 13, and they are at 92%. Kendall McCravey Cooper will have an opportunity. Freshman from Carson, California, has four points. Now she has five. Second one is good. 91-58 with 2.35 to go. Tam pulls the dribble left side to Welch, to Johnson. Out to Lynn. Now LaDuc has the three ball blocked. Is that Cheatham who got that or Cooper? I think it's probably Cooper. It's Cooper. Cooper was on the outside. Maggie Tyman, the official, set a perfect screen on me. She's got at least three on the afternoon, so a solid day for Kendall. 91 to 58. Jackson, head of the key, 210 to go. Over to Johnson. Cooper at the high post. Back to Johnson, to Jackson. Back to Cooper, she'll take the three straight on, just short. Cheatham, offensive rebound, up in traffic, good. Odera with a dozen, 93-58 with 150 to play. Nine rebounds for Cheatham. Blue Devils against Kansas tomorrow afternoon. Taylor Johnson, turnaround jumper off the glass left side. Johnson with all eight of her points in the second half. 93-60 to with 90 seconds left. Wells drives baseline. 
gives it to Cheatham right under the basket, and she needed to use the back of the rim, but it dropped through. 14 for Odera Cheatham. 14 and nine. Yeah, we're, we're wanting that extra rebound. Let's get it. LeDuc throws it away. It was supposed to be a baseline to baseline pass. Apparently it was tipped. It'll be Central Michigan's ball out of bounds with 108 to play. Blue Devils up 35. Welch to LeDuc. Back to Welch, middle of the floor. Into the corner, now Johnson off the glass, good. Taylor Johnson is on fire down the stretch. All 10 of her points, final 50 seconds, 95-62. Wells right wing. She gives it to Jackson beyond the arc on the left side. 35 seconds to play. 12 to shoot. Wells dribbles, drives it left, dishes it to Johnson. Fade away is no good. Odara Cheatham with the double-double now on the offensive rebound, and she's fouled on her way back up. Outstanding day for the freshman from Oakland, California. Well, you said it earlier, Steve. She's just gotten progressively better. We're seeing it from, from the freshman. They are, the more playing time they get at this level uh, and playing with their teammates, they're just, they're improving and growing. And the free throw is good. It's obvious that the ability is there. Wow. I mean, 14 points, 10 rebounds, runs the floor. Beautiful. Well, same thing for Cooper. The yeah. ability is there. They just need to get comfortable playing Division I college basketball. And they are. They're, both of them are doing very well. 97 to 62. LeDuc, high post. Over to Welch. Final seconds on this Friday afternoon. Inside it goes. Johnson's going to take it up again, and she's fouled with 3.8 seconds to go. That will be on Kalia Johnson. Ninety-seven to 62. Taylor Johnson's free throw is good. She averages five and a half points a game. Second free throw is good. And that will do it as the Blue Devils will just hold the inbound pass. Final score, Blue Devils 97, Central Michigan 64. Post game show right after this. <laughs> 